In the last video, we covered mortise and tenon joinery. In this video, we are covering tongue and groove joinery for frame and panel construction. This is cabinet C in a dry assembly. We have all of our cabinets, all four of them, in a dry assembly minus the center style on the lower cabinet sides. And I held off on this because this is going to be in a tongue and groove system. There's gonna be a groove all the way around here as well as on both sides of the center style and then a tongue top and bottom that will fit into the other grooves here. And then of course panels inside the rest of it. So I held off on cutting this because I need the groove established in order for me to establish the final length of this piece and as well as to size the, the uh, tongue. So how do we cut the groove? There's several different ways, but there's two methods that initially come to my mind. And that is if we were to just clamp these two pieces together, making sure the front face remains flat, then we can put a slot cutting bit into a router table and run this over the router table so that the bearing reference is on this, this inside face. And we can cut a quarter inch wide groove all the way around. We can do the exact same thing with just a regular handheld router if we clamp everything and make sure that this face remains flush all the way around and just approach it from that method. And that's what I was going to do. However, the bearing that I have on this slot cutting router bit will result in a 3 8 of an inch deep groove. And that's just a little bit deeper than what I want. I want a quarter inch wide and quarter inch deep groove. So we're going to pass on this and instead we're going to take each piece over to the router table individually and use a spiral upcut bit to make a quarter inch wide slot that is one quarter of an inch deep. Here at the router table I have a quarter inch spiral upcut router bit installed and I have it positioned so that it is exactly one quarter of an inch away from the fence and I'm using a drill bit to confirm this. Now I also have the height set at one quarter of an inch and what that does is it establishes a groove that is one quarter of an inch away from the fence and one quarter of an inch wide and one quarter of an inch deep. Actually just a tiny bit more than one quarter of an inch deep. Now I also have these removable fences positioned in such a way that these two reference lines here represent the start and stop point of the router bit. So if I do need to make plunges, uh, plunge cuts, I know that the router bit starts cutting exactly right here at this line. Same with the exit. If I put this over here and line it up with the back side of the router bit, you can see that it exits right there. That's useful if I need to start somewhere over here and plunge down. I won't be able to visually see the router bit, but I can visually see where it is cutting due to these reference lines up here. And a couple of these cuts will be plunge cuts. Now for all of our pieces, we labeled them so that in this case, this board is C17, belongs to cabinet C, it is 17 inches in length. And we wrote all of the notations here on the exterior face. And that's important because due to the fact that our rails and styles are not the exact same thickness as the legs, in order for this groove to line up, we need to have one reference plane that is uh, consistent on all of our pieces and that is the outside face. The outside face of the rails and styles will line up with the outside face of the legs. If that is also the case then we need to put the outside face up against the fence at all times. Now for these cuts as you can see I'll, I'll be cutting into the tenon and I don't want to do that. I want to leave as much tenon material as I possibly can because that's just more surface area for glue. Technically speaking, you can cut through all of this tenon, but like I said, I want to leave as much as possible for glue. So I'm going to plunge right at the beginning of this tenon right here and then complete my cut. And on the exit side, I'll do the exact opposite. I'll make sure that the router bit comes through into the tenon completely, and then I can lift the piece off, therefore leaving as much tenon as possible. We have all the grooves cut for the panels and this is a dry assembly of cabinet D. I made sure to put this together so that everything is nice and square and the tops are nice and flush. Now this is the right side of cabinet D 
and it gets a center style like so. That means we need to cut a tongue on the end of this board that has the grooves already cut in it. Now when I cut the grooves, uh, I tried to make sure that this was perfectly centered, but I did it in one pass with the router bit. So if I'm a little bit off, the way to center it is to flip the board around and make another pass, but that will widen the groove. Because I wanted to stay with one quarter of an inch, I just eyeballed center and I didn't do a tremendously awesome job because I can see that I'm visually a little bit larger on this side than this side. That just means we're going to have two different setups to cut this side of the tongue and to cut this right side of the tongue. That will determine the thickness of the tongue. Now I need to determine the length of the tongue. Now whatever I do on one side, I need to do on the other side. So the easiest way to do that is to simply push this up against the inside face up there on the front and measure this overhang right here. Whatever this distance is, I'll divide that by two and set that as my distance from the left side of the blade to the fence. And that will remove half of that distance on each end, which should result in a perfect fit. The distance from the top of the rail to the bottom of the style is dead on at a half of an inch, so I'm still accurate to my SketchUp model. So I'll set the fence to remove one quarter of an inch. Because my dado stack is set wider than the amount of material that I want to remove, uh, it's e much easier to add a sacrificial fence rather than to take a bunch of the pieces off. So for this case, I have a sacrificial fence clamped to my table saw fence, and then I positioned it to what I think is the appropriate width of cut. I've also raised the blade to, I th to what I think is the appropriate depth, and I ran a test piece. Now this test piece I can use to determine both the width and depth, and in my case the width is spot on. I really like this, right at one quarter of an inch, and I also have the depth of cut right here. So if I spin this around, and if I use the piece we're going to cut as a reference right there, I know I want to remove material from this bottom side, so if I put that material into the depth of cut, and if this surface and then the top side of this face in here are aligned, then I know my depth of cut is absolutely perfect for this side of the tongue. With everything dialed in for the first half of the tongue, I'll go ahead and cut both ends of the board. And after moving the fence twice, we've arrived at the perfect fit. So now that this is dialed in, I'm going to go ahead and make these cuts on all of my style pieces, and then we'll repeat the process for the top part of the tongue. The only difference for the other side is I need to remove just a tiny bit more material, so I'm going to raise the blade by just a little bit, make a test cut, and make sure everything is at the appropriate depth before I cut all of my pieces. The final thing to check is to make sure that the tongue is not too long. We cut our boards to the final length before the joinery, so this tongue might be a little bit too long and may bottom out in the groove. So with another board already cut, we can do a little assembly here and see that there's a tiny, tiny gap at the bottom of the tongue. That means there's enough room for glue squeeze out all of our Faces are nice and flush, so this board is indeed not too long. The doors for the upper cabinets are next, and they're going to be made with just regular tongue and groove joinery, all at the table saw. Now, the reason I didn't use the table saw for all of the tongue and groove joinery down at the bottom is because I didn't want the table saw blade to go all the way through the bottom of the leg, which it would have to do. And that means I would have to patch a small piece of groove right here that is going to be exposed in the bottom of the legs where there is no joinery. It's not the end of the world if you do have to patch something like that. You can do it and you can probably get a good color match if you pull from the same stock, but uh, I didn't want to have that patch at all, so to eliminate that we used the router table. But like I said, every bit of the doors is going to be made at the table saw. Tongue and groove joinery on the table saw is incredibly easy to do, and I have a video on my website showing you step by step how to make tongue and groove doors. Uh, on my table saw with a regular table saw blade. The only disadvantage of using a regular table saw blade is you won't get a flat bottom groove because the vast majority of them have alternating angled teeth. Now, if you have a table saw blade that has flat grind teeth, then that'll work just fine. Uh, well, that'll result in a flat bottom groove. This one will work just fine as well. But what I've done is I've taken my dado stack and I've reduced it down to just the outside blades and that will result in a quarter inch wide flat bottom groove. 
Now just because it's quarter of an inch and I'm working with three quarter inch stock doesn't mean all I have to do is just try and line it up with center. There's one more thing you have to do. First, line the blade up as centered as possible onto the material. And then once you pass your material through, flip it end for end regardless of how much material the second pass will take and make another pass. That means if I am 1 64th of an inch away from being perfectly centered, that 1 64th of an inch will be removed on the second pass and the resulting groove will be absolutely perfect and center. All of the door joinery is complete and the doors turned out really well. We're pleased with the way that these doors look. And of course, all of the base joinery is complete. So now we need to put something in all of these grooves. We're gonna focus our attention on all of the panels and we should be able to get every single one of our panels out of one eight quarter board. This is the board that we're going to use to get all of our panels out of. And it's kind of hard to show an entire board in one shot. So basically this is an eight quarter board. It's got some curl, some, some beautiful figure in it. We won't know for sure how much until we really dig into it. Uh, but the bottom side in this orientation, the bottom side is a little bit more flat sawn, a little bit more cathedral look to it. And the top side has a little bit more... Uh, straight grain appearance to the grain. Now that means we're not going to get a perfect match along its entire width for a single panel. Luckily we have a lot of situations where we can play off of symmetry. So whatever we have in the right door up on top we can flip and put in the other door and kind of get a symmetrical pattern even though individually they may not look symmetrical uh, throughout the entire width of an individual panel. And then also on the bottom, on the bottom cabinet on the sides, we have a center uh, style that's going to divide those two panels. So even if it's just kind of out there as far as the grain goes individually, we, sh we can still book match and have two symmetrical panels, somewhat symmetrical anyway. And speaking of book matching, this is a full two inches thick and all of our panels only need to be one quarter of an inch thick. So what we're going to do is cut this into several different lengths uh, based upon the total length of our panels. And then we can joint two faces at the jointer, a wide face and a short face. And then at that point we will be ready to go at the bandsaw to resaw a bunch of the panels. I have my bandsaw set up with my resaw fence and this is just a very simple homemade solution that slips over the stock fence on the saw. Now the goal here is to get a panel that is just a little bit more than one quarter of an inch. So I set my distance both on top and bottom. Make sure you check the distance uh, from the blade to the fence on the bottom as well as the top to make sure you have your table angle properly set but I have the distance set to be about 5 sixteenths of an inch so we can re resaw all of our pieces and then plane them down to an absolute perfect fit. Each one of our eight quarter boards yielded five panels and now we can go ahead and mill all of these down to their final thickness at the planer. The left and right side of each of the lower cabinets is going to have two book matched panels and we went ahead and made some diagonal lines on our boards before we sliced out these panels. That way we can put them back in sequential order and we can open them up and see book matched panels. So some of these are going to look great. Some of them aren't. That's just because we're going to be cutting through some of the grain. This flat side area, we're slicing kind of in the grain. This quarter sawn area will look more symmetrical. So on every one of these, this set, the outside here, will be kind of symmetrical. It's just the inside that's going to vary because we are slicing through the grain. So we want to take the time here and open up each one of these pairs and see which ones are acceptable and which ones are not acceptable because all we need is four book matched pairs. Now this, that's somewhat symmetrical on this line, on this piece of grain here, but then we have this extra one uh, that's all by itself on the left side. So something like this, I would probably say no. Go back to this first one here, and I would probably be more inclined to say yes. We're gonna go through all of our pieces, all of our panels, and make sure we have at least four that are nice in the book matched orientation. 
We've determined the appropriate placement for every single one of our panels and really take the extra time here to you know, do a once around, twice around, uh, just really look at all of the panels and make sure that you have the appropriate orientation for every single one of them. So now that we have everything in place, we know we're not short on any panels. We know everything should should look appropriate when it's all said and done. Uh, we are left over with, or we've got five panels left over, which is good because this is going to be some material that we can pull from for the drawer bottoms. Now I, I understand that not all boards are created equally and you may not have the same amount of yield. You may not even have the same size boards as we have, but keep on to, or keep a hold of all of your extra material because odds are you may end up using it down the road. Now that the location for all of the panels is established, we can cut them to their final width. And to do so, we're using the table saw. We're gonna start with the upper cabinet doors because they are the most narrow in width and work our way around the upper cabinets. Then we can go to the lower cabinets. That's it for the third video in this series. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss the next one, which will be picking up with the arches on the lower cabinets. Uh, there's gonna be a lot to cover in the next one, uh, but be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Check out my website, jacecustomcreations.com, and while you're there, sign up for my email newsletter so you don't miss any of the stuff that I publish. I publish a lot more stuff on my website than I do right here on YouTube. And another big shout out to Sean Stone of stoneandsons.net. Check out his website. He's the one who's uh, building alongside me in this entire project. And he also purchased all this cherry that we're just having a lot of fun cutting up. So until next time, you guys take care and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, see, you, I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> Darn it. That was so good until the end.